What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting and appetite. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. FTA all day, baby. I'm talking about this because there was a recent meta-analysis looking at comparing intermittent fasting and various forms of fasting, including time-restricted feeding, 5-2 diet, alternate day fasting versus continuous energy restriction, basically where people are eating continuously throughout the day. And they were looking at was there differences in weight loss, appetite, uh, and they looked at appetite in terms of perceived hunger, rating of fullness, and prospective food consumption. So how much food do they consume after fasting or after continuous energy restriction? Desire to eat and lowering of calories or how much each treatment lowered their caloric intake. And they did it from randomized control trials, which is important. They looked at various different populations and the inclusion criteria basically got them like over a thousand subjects in terms of what they examined. What they found was that intermittent fasting did not decrease appetite more than continuous energy restriction. And that held true for all different measures of appetite, including uh, fullness, desire to eat, perceived hunger, actual calorie consumption, uh, as well as post-treatment prospective food intake. A lot of people will say things like, oh, I wasn't hungry on intermittent fasting. That may be true on an individual level. Some people do better with intermittent fasting in terms of hunger or perceived hunger. But on a population level, on average, it doesn't appear to be better than continuous energy restriction. Now, a lot of people will also say intermittent fasting is just easier to stick to. It's easier for people to stick to, and that's, that's what makes it better. They looked at adherence in this meta-analysis, and they also found that adherence was not significantly different from people just practicing standard continuous energy restriction. In fact, on an absolute basis, it actually favored continuous energy restriction. It just it wasn't a, a significant effect, so I don't think it's a real effect. But it's very funny that intermittent fasting zealots have kind of gone down the list of why intermittent fasting is better, trying to find a reason it's better, starting with, it's way better for fat loss because you're in fat burning mode. And then we have a bunch of randomized control trials showing that when you equate calories, it does not produce more weight loss or fat loss. And then they go to, well, you're not hungry. Nope, nope, nope. Bunch of randomized control trials showing it doesn't affect appetite any differently. Well, it's easier to stick to. Nope, nope, nope. Bunch of randomized control trials showing that Adherence is no different between this style of dieting and continuous energy restriction. So this is also in line with a recent randomized control trial where they looked at intermittent fasting versus continuous energy restriction on food intake and fat loss. And what they found was there was no difference in either. And actually the continuous energy restriction group lost more weight on average than the intermittent fasting group, but it wasn't statistically different. It doesn't appear to have a significantly different effect than just eating less calories. Here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying intermittent fasting isn't a good tool for some people. It absolutely is. Obviously, there are many, many, many people who lose a lot of weight using intermittent fasting. What I'm saying is it's not better on average than regular continuous energy restriction for the purposes of fat loss and body composition. And there is some evidence that it may be a little bit worse for lean mass, so that's important to keep an eye on. But for fat loss, it doesn't appear to be better or worse, which means do what you prefer, which is great news because many people prefer that style of eating compared to continuous energy restriction. At the end of the day, in order to lose fat, you have to practice some form of restriction, but you can pick the form of restriction that feels the least restrictive to you as an individual, and you should use that form of restriction. So if you like intermittent fasting, who cares what Billy Bob thinks about it? If you like it, do it. But don't get mad at Billy Bob because he prefers to track calories and do that instead of do intermittent fasting. Because for every person that loves intermittent fasting, I've also found somebody who said, you know, I just ended up kind of binge eating at the end of the day because I was so hungry from intermittent fasting. It's not magic. It is a tool. It's a great tool to use for some people, but it's not appropriate for everyone. And if fasting zealots could just accept that, it would be far less annoying to talk to them. All right, guys, 
If you like intermittent fasting, one of the great things about our nutritional coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach, is we don't pigeonhole you into one style of eating. You can do time-restricted eating with Carbon Diet Coach. You can do a ketogenic diet with Carbon Diet Coach. You can do a balanced diet. You can do low fat. You can do low carb. You can do all these different forms of dieting because we don't make you stick into one style of dieting because we know that adherence is the most important thing for producing long-term results. And that's why tens of thousands of people trust Carbon with their nutrition coaching at $10 a month. You can't do better than it. Designed by some really smart people. I don't know who. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description and subscribe. All right, guys, I'll catch you next week.